It's all about passion, it's all about change It's all inclusive, every day of the week When the world comes together, united as one Sharing stories through the eyes of InView TV Hello! Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of What Matters Oh I am God. Jojo. And I'm Jess. Thank you guys for tuning in tonight. We've got a beautiful show ahead for you. Um, yes. Um, and we are so excited to bring you What Matters. So it's a brand new show streaming live every Tuesday night. And What Matters has been built on the foundations that honour freedom of speech in pursuit of truth with the hopes and possibilities. I guess that we can unite through, um, I guess, our differences and every week we're going to have a new guest yes. on um, discussing all current topics um, and even the controversial issues. So, But before we get into it, guys, I would like to formally begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on where we gather and pay respect to the elders past, present and emerging of all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander nations. Uh, just like our, our Aboriginal whānau, our um, First Nations whānau yeah. here in Australia, my culture, we like to give our thanks um, to our great divine, to our, our land, our Mother Earth, um, to those who have gone before us and those who are with us today. Um, thank you all. Thank you all for tuning in. Wonderful. And I think it's so important to really acknowledge um, the traditional landowners um, and acknowledge, you know, where we come from and, and those who have come before us. So, guys, look, we'd just like to remind you that we are streaming live from Inview TV and Ovo Play. And yes. we also stream to YouTube as well and also to Facebook. So. Yes. And um, we've got a great guest on tonight, and we are so excited to bring him on. Um, if you want and you have some beautiful or some amazing questions to ask our guest, Fanos, yes, um, go over to the What Matters page, pop your questions in the um, in the comment section there, and you may even see them pop up here on the screen uh, before us. So yeah, so get creative, guys, with your questions. You know, we've got a really really exciting show planned um, and we want you guys to get involved and really what matters is I guess it's news by the people for the people so get involved mm. share a little you know create a little watch party let your friends know that you're tuning in watching us share this knowledge because uh, yeah like we said we have Thanos Panayitis who is going to be joining us very soon our very uh, first guest for what matters are we so excited and so honored to have him on tonight yes yeah, so um, you know Thanos has really hit you know the headlines recently I guess yes. um, in the last few months since uh, COVID came about uh, he's really shared his views and I guess um, I'm really interested and this is why I wanted to bring him on today because I'm really interested to see where his views have come from um, and, 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 and understand that because I think it's really important if we can hear from people, hear from them directly, um, you know, uncut, unedited and then, you know, we can get the full perspective of really what's going on and then we can make the judgment, we can make those decisions and, and really go, oh, does that, does that relate, does it feel good, you know, does it make sense and then you know hopefully it can inspire us to um, ask more questions yep. so I guess you know what with that further ado I reckon let's uh, get the show rolling and let's bring on Thanos okay mix that first and see what the consistency is like Hannah Yeti do you remember the fighting they had going on they seem to be a little bit calmer today so I have a look at this this looks pretty good as a cake yep. batter I think we cook a lot better when we're not arguing um, and we've learned that from pre previous um, challenges. You started a group on Facebook and it's called? 99% uh, Unite. How did you get that name? It's an interesting question. Well, there's, there's the 1% yeah. who are the elitists, the people that control everything in the world. Yeah. And then there's, there's the rest of us. There's the 1% that control all the wealth. Yeah. And there's the 99%, which is everyone else. So okay. that's why I call that 99% Unite. 
I saw what was going on with the world and I saw how, you know, the the level of lies and the information that was being told to the people didn't line up with what was going on. Yeah. And the rules that was being imposed on the people didn't line up with what we're dealing with. Yeah. And when I saw all the world's economies getting ready to crash at once, I said, they're getting ready to do a world takeover. Yeah. It's happening now. Yeah. You know, right now, you know, the, there's a, the whole world's not working. The whole world right now is getting rules imposed that everyone's saying is a breach of people's rights. So we're talking here about the New World Order? Yeah, we could say that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 100%. You've done an interview with uh, 60 Minutes? Yeah, I did. I did, a, I did an interview with 60 Minutes last week, and the reason I did the interview was because every time I've turned down interviews, They've gone and painted me as whatever they wanted to paint me anyway. Yeah. So I thought I'd have a say in the matter. Okay. Yeah, I think they're going to try and label me as some type of uh, conspiracy theorist or whatever they're going to do. I really don't care because people don't trust the media anymore. And if anything, they're going to be curious into what I'm looking into. Oh, well, well, well. Um, <laughs> oh, my God, man. Hey. I swear to God, if you had told me three months ago, or let's say five months ago, when, <laughs> when I stopped doing security, this would be my life, I swear to God, I wouldn't have believed you, right? I just saw a video. <laughs> Apparently, I am a, <laughs> what did he call me? <laughs> uh, a cabal plant. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that was a great video. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> and well, welcome, Fanos. Welcome, thank you hey so girls, much for you? you know being with us tonight, Fanos. We really appreciate it. Um, thank you, you for giving your time. Um, I'm sure you want to get straight into it and tell us, share with us your knowledge. Like, to personally, I, I have followed and watched some of your videos, um, not all of them. Some of them I thought you're a bit, ooh, no, <laughs> <laughs> um, don't need any more of those people. Um, but, you know, hearing some of your conversations on these lives and videos you do, I mean, you you have a point. You, you, you make sense. You make sense. You, you, you're just Sometimes you sound bat, bat shit crazy, but you actually make sense. And and I think when, <laughs> when, when, when this started, and I remember coming across you earlier on when you started your Facebook page, and, and I was like, Jess, check this out. And I was really intrigued by what you had to say. Mm. And, and then just started following, following you. And it's obviously, you know, seeing you end up on, on um, a current affair. Was it a current affair? 16 minutes. 16 minutes. So I guess, yeah, take us back. Where did it, yeah, where I tell us more where did it all start from? Uh, with regards to the 60 minutes journey or the beginning of the whole journey itself? The whole cabal. <laughs> where the it all journey. started, the where, whole where, journey. Where, where was the turning point for you where you woke up and you realised there was See, something? Not I, I, don't, I don't watch the news. About the whole COVID thing, I don't watch the news, right? So when I, like back year, in um, March when I first started doing my videos, um, I didn't watch the news up until that point. I was, you know, noticing that all these restrictions were coming through and, you know, then they started buying all this toilet paper. I'm like, what's going on, right? And I really didn't think too much about this virus in the beginning. And, um, you know, what's piqued my interest in the beginning, I've always been a, a firm believer in terms of the world being taken over, one world currency, one world government, um, you know, the really, really rich and the really, really poor, Right. And I've done a lot of research in it, but I never really, you know, spoke up about it too much. It was more of an internal conversation between friends, and that was about it, right? And I noticed that the the travel bans on the countries when the when COVID first hit Australia, um, there was four countries that had tra uh, travel bans on them. And I looked at the countries, and then I had a look at the. I went and wanted to see and have a look at the numbers in those countries and see how many infections there were. And what I found interesting was instead of there being, you know, like these, like a natural spread of numbers increasing exponentially in each, in each region, there was just these massive hotspots, right? 
So, you know, China had about 80,000 infections. I think Italy had 11,000 at the time. Iran had 9,000, right? Um, and South Korea had about uh, eight or 9,000. And I was, per I was perplexed because the countries surrounding China had nothing, like five, 10. We're talking the borders between China, like countries that were on the border of China had no infections. But then you'd hop over to Italy and there was 11,000. And you'd go to Iran and there was 9,000, you know. And I found that very, um, it didn't seem natural, right? And all of the countries surrounding these hotspots had really, really, low, really low, low numbers, like 25, 40. Like, um, for instance, Iran had 9,000 at that time. And I believe Iraq had 25 and Saudi Arabia had 45 cases. And I'm thinking... How is it possible these countries can have such hot spots and these other countries surrounding these other countries mm. are absolutely have nothing at the time, right? And I found that very, very interesting. And that's what piqued my interest in terms of, you know, I saw how all these economies were stopping, right? Yeah. And I go, man, no one's working at the moment. Mm. Like the whole world has stopped. When yeah. has the whole world stopped before like this? Yeah. You know? And it's just those patterns. You, you, you know, everything's about common sense. In my eyes, everything's about common sense, right? I don't care how great your facts are if they don't make sense, right? Because all the fact is, is a body of information that's been agreed upon by peers. That's it. A fact doesn't mean it's set in stone because there's plenty of facts that have been disproven. Yeah, that's you correct. Know? And, and what you were saying about all this information that you started to research, um, I'm not going to lie, I came across it myself and I had the same feeling as you, this isn't making any sense. Mm. A natural, natural virus going around the world, there's clusters here, clusters there. I had the same exact feeling, my intuition kicked in and it made me question a lot of things. Mm. So I think what you were yeah. doing was the natural instinct. Yeah. And um, so, where, where where do you source your your information? information. From? Where this, do you this get is it? This the big from? issue with anyone who has an opinion. You need to have credible information, right? Where where do you look to for your sources? Well, it begs the question as to what someone believes credible information is. If the source of information that's meant to be given to the people has been um, you know, compromise due to the influx of money and funds from unknown sources in order to push an agenda. You can't really say that, you know, what uh, a source of information is actually a credible source of information or not. People could believe it is because it's believed to have come, uh, have come from a trusted source, but does that mean it's credible information? You can't say that. Cigarettes were said to be safe back in the 50s, weren't they? Didn't they say cigarettes were good for you? And didn't that come from scientists and credible, uh, credible sources? And didn't they have the media and everyone backing and how safe cigarettes were? Or should we go and have the uh, discussion about asbestos and have the same discussion about how safe asbestos was and how good it was to have it in everyone's home, right? Now, you couldn't put asbestos in front of anybody without them needing a hazmat suit to get rid of it. And all of these people that would be turning around and saying, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, you're a tin four wear wearing nut job, would be the very people who'd be concerned finding asbestos these days because now it has been endorsed by the government at, at how dangerous it is. And it is a fact that asbestos is in actual fact dangerous because they couldn't hide it anymore. So in terms of where do, how do I find my facts, I try and find multiple bodies of information from unrelated sources that all tell me the same story. But I, I don't just look at... I, you know, see, so this is the problem with people when they think about um, people that look off the mainstream. They think we watch one YouTube video and we make our mind up. That's not how we work, right? You look at multiple bodies of information and you, you, you're looking through so many things to try and disprove the fact that you're finding that information because, you, you know, it, you want to believe the mainstream. And, well, where do you find your information from? Sources that were pre this year, right? Um, a lot of the information I, I, I found in terms of why I believe what I believe was looking at anything that had to do that was before this time and not so much the mainstream sources of information because they've all been compromised in my eyes. 
Yeah. yeah, that's correct. I mean, I totally agree with you. Um, it, it seems to be a, a, a bit of a, a tech war information going on at, at the moment. Um, anything that's out there is getting ridiculed. Um, you and then you've watch... got, you've also got, you know, I guess with the whole fact checking, and it seems like you've got journalists, fact checking scientists, um, and there's been a lot of, you know, censoring going on, and mm. and, and and people yeah. have been silenced and and I know even with yourself you all, you know I guess you've been a bit of um, let's say maybe the ringleader of a lot of some of those peaceful protests that were going on mm. um, you know and and, and I, I saw that you actually got arrested at one of the peaceful protests so mm. what can, about what about tell us a bit more because we we realized that you you you've I'm going to be real had the balls to speak up and you've created a movement Mm. Tell us a bit more about this movement because I, I've, I've realised you've been um, pretty much the ringleader in getting these um, protests out there, um, yeah. out in Melbourne. I did come across um, an odd um, write-up of you about um, you being arrested. I, I, I'm, I'm actually interested to hear a bit more about that as well. Yep. Hey, look, I'm not going to take um, uh, complete credit for all of the protests um, in terms of the first one, which wasn't really a protest, but I went down there on my own, um, you have to lead by example. And, you know, I, I said to myself that if people are going to believe in you and believe what you're doing, you need to be, uh, you know, a person who's going to lead by example. So I took myself down there without knowing what was going to happen the first time, ended up having a conversation with eight or nine cops at that stage. Um, and uh, funnily enough, eight people turned up, which wasn't enough for us to be uh, more than 10 people for a gathering, <laughs> which was interesting. Um, and then that next Sunday was when we had the, um, the, the protest at the Parliament House. And what happened was someone was organising to have a protest there at 2 o'clock and we decided to join, join up and get there early and meet all the group that was coming at 2 um, with the first one. And so what basically happened was the police didn't get what they want. They, they, the police didn't get what they wanted, right? They, they wanted people that were violent. They wanted people that were, um, you know, trying to cause a scene and be a public disturbance. But we weren't. We were quite peaceful. And the police decided to start um, roughing people up. Um, they went and grabbed Craig Cole, slammed his face into the ground when they arrested him. People would wonder why that didn't happen to me because I understand security and I understand use of force. And I knew the moment they grabbed me, if I had resisted, it would have given them more than enough capability to, to, to use whatever means necessary they would have needed to to arrest me and take me um, and cuff me. And so the moment they grabbed me, I went limp, right? Um, I did that because I'm smart. I'm not going to allow people to, um, how do I explain it? I'm, I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I'm going to be guilty of an indictable offence because I've just hit an officer in self-defence and then they would have been able to hold me for longer than um, had just, you know, been involved in a summary offence. So I just I went limp when they grabbed me and they they put me away. Um, they took me over to the um the van. They didn't put cuffs on me because I wasn't struggling. They put me in and I sat there and I sat inside this divvy van. I, I said I can't believe for the first time in my life I've been uh, arrested and I didn't even do anything wrong in my eyes, right? Mm. And that was when what it hit home. Just a couple of world actually... What do you, what do you think triggered them in that moment? to actually arrest you? What actually happened well, at that what moment? Were you, were you doing anything radical at that moment? Um, so basically, look, what happened was I'd already finished on the mic and I noticed the crowd was getting a bit unrestful, uh, a little bit um, restless in terms of the way they were acting because of the way the police were being. Um, so I decided to get on and, you know, calm the crowd down, which I did. I did a great job of it and I even, you know, spoke about, you know, how the police's job wasn't easy, right? And I really did try to sympathise with regards to what they have to do because I know what it's like to try and do a job where you have to, you know, manage the behaviour of people. It's not easy, right? And um, I decided to read a verse um, out of out of Scripture, which was um, a verse from uh, something called Revelation, which is uh, St. John's prophecy. And it says of the microchip, right? It says the mark of the beast. And I was halfway through reading it and the cops came like, you know, a mad train of people to take me out of there before I even had a, had a chance to finish reading it. And I don't understand why, if you're being peaceful and not inciting violence, what possible reason could you want to have to arrest someone? 
your entire laws that you base all of all of your laws on the entire law system that legislation is based on is all um, goes back to the King James Bible. So <laughs> your whole system is based on it, but you can't read a verse out of it, which was interesting. Um, but I think it's, they just didn't want me to mention that about the um, not being able to buy or sell, whether you've got a mark of the beast, which is you know which is believed to be the um, the microchip or some type of digital identification or something of that matter. Oh wow! You know it, that's it, when they it, grabbed it, me. Like the, I've I've heard of these stories before, but I've never actually heard of it from. I would class you as a victim because you weren't doing anything wrong. Yeah. You're an innocent member of no. the public. You're having a peaceful protest. Yeah. And I've heard of these stories before and you, you, you do try and think it doesn't exist, but it does. Yeah. And unfortunately yeah. this is what's happening in our communities right now. And I'm I'm afraid to say it, but it feels like a big martial law state. Yeah. And and you're down in Melbourne. You you're down in Melbourne as well. So and obviously you guys have gone into your second Lockdown, I think, you know, I feel like it's, we potentially may, you know, might have the first wave in, in, in Victoria. Now we didn't really get a first wave. But can you just share more about, you know, what it's like to be in Melbourne right now? Obviously, you kind of have martial law happening and you can't leave your house from eight at night to five in the morning. Um, I know how bad that is for, you know, our own mental health, but you're there and you're experiencing that for yourself. So I guess maybe um, maybe share some light on the rest of us who aren't in your situation or who aren't living in Melbourne under these restrictions and laws right now. Maybe enlighten us. What is it like? Be real. What is it yeah. like? Um, mandatory masks is you know pretty full on, right? The fact that like people are being treated like common criminals because they're not wearing masks. Like people are being treated like common criminals. Um, just the overall energy of, of Melbourne's horrible. People are walking around. They're miserable, right? The people are absolutely, absolutely miserable, miserable here at the moment. You go to the, um, you know, to the local shops or the, um, the, you know, the shopping centres and stuff like that. There is people aren't in a great place mentally. You can just tell, and you know, so many people you can tell um, are only wearing those things because they're being told to, and not for any other reason, you know. Um, you know, the fact that you've got a curfew now at 8 p.m., why? Because the virus, what, doesn't want to go, the virus it goes out with its mates at 8 p.m. and there's more of the virus around. How ridiculous are these, um, the curfew is ridiculous. Um, you know, one hour of exercise a day if you go out more than an hour or you can't go exercising more than once a day. What the hell does that have to do with the virus? You know, mm. who are the experts that make up these conditions? Oh, they go, oh, we've referred to these experts at universities. I'm sorry, this has never happened before to the planet. So how is this guy an expert on anything? That's like yeah. saying someone who's never cooked before, who's made a pie, who's never cooked a pie before, just because he's a chef, he's the expert on how that pie should be made. If you've never made one before, why, why are you telling people about it? You know, who are these people? Yeah. The experts on what should be happening here should be, you know, human behavioural scientists and people who are, you know, um, looking out for people's well-being, like, you know, um, uh, top health uh, physicians who are speaking of people being able to strengthen their immune system and, you know, stuff that you actually need. Why are we going to these these professors who say, oh, stage five should look like we have to wear masks inside? You tell me what benefit you're going to have from wearing a mask inside. Seriously, yeah. you're in a controlled environment. If we needed to wear a mask in our home, we shouldn't be inside in the first place. If anything, we should be outside more. At least yeah. there's UV light out. UV light's known to kill things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly I walked past the playground yeah. and said, playground closed. Like, how the... I thought kids aren't susceptible to the virus, so why can't they go play in the play equipment? Hmm. You know what I mean? And like, I think things don't really make sense. Mm. And, and that's what I, you know, and I, well, I definitely agree in that sense that things don't make sense. And I guess, you know, look, we haven't been through this before. This is the first time we're experiencing a, a pandemic or, mm. um, and so it, it feels like it's a little bit of a guessing game. It really is a bit of a guessing game on how we're going to treat this and what we're going to do. And, yeah. and, and, you know, it's just a bit of a, a trial an error, but mm. while we're trialing and erring, you know, we've got suicide going through the roof. 
mental health is at its highest. Yeah, domestic you, violence. Domestic violence. We've got businesses that are shutting down or that are closing. Millions of people out of jobs. How is that good for oh, our yeah. health? Yeah. How is that good? Yeah, that, like, anyway. Our economy is collapsing. The collateral damage that we have right now is going to destroy us, mm. if not sooner than this virus. Yeah. I mean... Wh Businesses what, are never going to open again. Yeah. yeah. Small absolutely. Small businesses finished. Yeah. Small businesses um, absolutely you know, finished. You, you're quite um, um, uh, um, an activist um, for freedom of speech. And we know, being online entrepreneurs, um, how hard it's been mm. trying to get any opinion out there right now. Everything's been taken off Facebook. Um, you get I watched ridiculed. a video, video of frontline doctors in America trying to speak up of a treatment. Had four million, 14 million views in six hours. That got pulled down from Facebook. If we can't trust these mainstream media platforms, who can we trust? Mm. You know, and, and, and that's why everyone is in this... Um, this energy of searching for the truth. Who's yeah. telling the truth anymore? Um, but I, I really want to ask you, Fanos, um, what, is, um, what is your views behind 5G? Can I just be honest with that? So when all of this started, I didn't, I didn't think anything about 5G at all. I honestly believed that there was a virus. And uh, I'll tell you what, you know, piqued my interest because I had the Facebook um, page and we'd have, you know, close to maybe four or 5,000 posts a day, right? And we'd get something called violations of community standards. And we'd get things that were labeled as, um, you know, false information or whatever else. And they kept flagging 5G. And anything to do with coronavirus having something to do with 5G was, um, was a breach of community standards. And they'd wipe it. They'd wipe it off Facebook, right? But there was pedophile pages that were still open and being reviewed, right? And, you know, that's what really piqued my interest because I said, hang on a second, why does social media care so much about telecommunications technology? Why would you be so concerned with, you know, if, if something's just a conspiracy, why, since when has Facebook ever care, cared about conspiracies, Right? They just let things go and people would have their own their opinions. But what I noticed was they were starting to get rid of everything. So I said, okay, well, why? I said, if you're telling people not to look somewhere, that's exactly where I want to start looking. So I decided to look at the symptoms that had to do with COVID. I said, okay, can these be um, explained with radiation? And... Every single symptom I found, I found that it was able to be explained with exposure to the brain, radiation exposure to the brain, radiation exposure to the eyes, radiation exposure to the lungs, and overall radiation exposure to the body. And what really piqued my interest was I saw a massive collection of videos that were of the people that were suffering during the, during the beginning in Wuhan. And, you know, a lot of people say these people are crisis actors. I will tell you now, I know human behavior. I've done security for nine, ten years. I know when someone's acting like they're surprised and when someone's really surprised. And you can tell in people's body language, their face, their eyes, uh, you know, how, they, how their body is moving. You know when someone's, uh, you know, acting and when these people are really, really concerned and this has just happened. And people were dying in the street. And that's what piqued my interest. I said, why are people dying in the street? If you've got pneumonia, why were you playing clothes walking around, right? Because you can't say to me that you can die of your pneumonia with this, right? How you die from COVID it is it's severe acute respiratory syndrome, right? That's what it's based on, right? So it's, it's, it's SARS, COVID 2.0, whatever they call it. If it's a severe acute respiratory syndrome, why were the people in China dying on the street playing clothes? If you had severe pneumonia, why were you walking outside? If you are on your deathbed, why were you walking outside? You wouldn't be. I don't know about you, but when you've got the flu or pneumonia, you're not getting out of bed. So if it's pneumonia is going to be the very thing that's killing you and you're at your deathbed being, being killed by pneumonia, why were you walking on the street? That's what piqued yeah. my interest. Then I saw seizures. Yeah. I said, oh, hang on. 
Why are these guys having seizures? That's a neurological problem. Yes, it can be caused by a high temperature, right, or fever. But if you've got a fever that's going to be high enough to cause a seizure, you are not walking around in a T-shirt going and having takeaway in your hands and dying on the street. So that didn't make sense to me. I said, okay, can seizures be caused by something else? I checked if seizures can be caused from radiation exposure to the brain. Yes. So I said, mm -hmm. seizures and every other symptom now are being caused by this technology. I said, all right, let me see if the technology was there and if the timeline is there. Mm. The technology was implemented in November. And everyone says, oh, you know, this technology is not dangerous. You can't say that because it's not just the technology, it's volume and distance from every person, right? In Wuhan, there was 10,000 base stations by, by December. Now, just to give you an understanding, Wuhan's 8,400 square kilometers, right? Epping in Victoria, in the, state of Mel in, in the city of Melbourne, is 9,400 square kilometers. So Wuhan was smaller than Epping, one suburb, and it had 10,000 base stations on schools, Everywhere you can think of, there was 10,000 base stations in Wuhan. They had a 28-kilometer stretch of highway, which was fully autonomous vehicles. It was the only highway in the world that had self-driving vehicles, fully autonomous, and they were even boasting how engine manufacturers could come over and um, try out their self-driving cars on this fully autonomous highway. They were trying 5G at its full capability, right? They were using the Internet of Things, Right, so you've got thousands, of, you've got millions and millions of receivers working off the Internet of Things. You've got all these base stations within a hundred meters of people, and people are comparing it to what we are going through in Australia. It's not even, it's not even within the same realm of possibility. And to the people that defend the fact that they say, "Oh, you know, what uh, scientific research have you done?" The the very um, uh, institution that's meant to protect us, which is called Arpanza, right? They are the people that regulate the radio waves in Australia. Yeah, they are regulated by something called the I I C N I R P. I think it's the International Commission of Non Ionizing Radiation. Right, that's what it's called. They did. They worked their standards and guidelines of studies that were done in 1998. And those same standards that regulate the radio waves in this country, right, are being used. So we're talking from 22 years ago. You're using the same guidelines and standards. And this, the guidelines that says within the standards, they said that the, um, the evidence that, that suggests that, you know, radio waves can uh, be carcinogenic were non-conclusive. Um, they didn't reach a, a conclusion. And they said that all of the uh, guidelines that have been it, it, uh, it, all of the guidelines that have been in, uh, implemented that the uh, that you know in, institutions like RPANs are following, right, are all based on short-term radio exposure. So not long-term, short-term, right. So basically, what they're saying is that we are under these things twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week, three hundred sixty-five days a year, but you've only tested for thirty days, for instance, right. And then they and the, the guidelines are tested on only t changes in skin temperature, not biological uh, adverse biological changes like cancer and all the other stuff. So the whole thing reeks of lies and, and can, I'm not allowed to swear on this. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. It's freedom of speech. <laughs> and the standards that are being implemented, oh, it's well within the standards. Well, the standards are well within where they want them to be. So no matter what technology they implement, it's not going to go higher anyway because the standards are way higher than they should be. Yeah. yeah. You know? And that's what You're piqued right. my interest in it. And yeah. I, I read um, something recently that Elisa Milano did a video where she said that she was losing hair due to COVID. And I was waiting for people to start saying hair loss from COVID because that's another thing that you get from radiation exposure. Wow. I did see that video, actually. Oh, wow. I really, I actually saw that video of hers. Mm. Um, of, um, like, every single symptom. Here's, the thing, some, right? here's the thing, right? Here's the thing, right? If you're a detective and you wanted to see if a murderer had committed the murder, you'd say, was the murderer there when the victim was there? You could say yes. And then if you put all the pieces of the puzzle together, every single symptom that has to do with, has to do with that technology, right, has, has to do with COVID, 
is also found with every single time you're exposed to that type of radio frequency, radiation. Every single symptom, right? Well, but even conjunctivitis, even conjunctivitis is caused from radiation exposure to the eyes. So yeah. now look at the timelines in Melbourne especially. Now, we flatten the curve totally and people are actually going to be, believe the idiotic excuse that COVID spread from some security who had sexual relations with a female in, in a hotel and spread one of the most contagious diseases on the planet, apparently, right? It went down to almost nothing and then all of a sudden some guy did the dirty and all of a sudden it's got out there. And this, this is how, this is, I can't believe how gullible people, people are and believe something so stupid. Right, but then you also have a look at look at the cases, how high they've got in Melbourne, mm. and look at when the technology was officially turned on in our state. Six weeks to eight weeks after exposure, we're getting all of these spikes. Why? Yeah. Why are we getting all these spikes in nursing homes if people aren't allowed to go see people in nursing homes? Where's the COVID coming from exactly, and infecting everybody? Absolutely. Right? Why are we getting all these spikes now after we put in all the measures? After everyone's paranoid is all hell. After anyone doesn't want to go next to each other. After, you know, quarter of the population was wearing masks, masks or half of the population in Melbourne was wearing masks up until that stage. Yeah. So all the preventative measures are there and now your numbers are soaring through the roof? Why? Yeah. Yeah. Explain and probably it. another fun fact that a lot of people don't know is 5G has been around for many years and it's actually military technology. I found that out myself watching a military unit use it. And what they use it for is to disperse crowds. That's that's how high the frequency of this technology can project, that it makes you run when, whenever they shine that um, that um, satellite. Yeah, you're or speaking that about something called the active denial system. Mm. So um, I, I want to know if we've got so a little bit of time left um, to answer some questions that have come yeah, through yeah. Um, while you've been educating everyone there, Thanos. Yeah. So, guys, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have to try and wrap it up really soon. And I, I this is what I mean. Time travels and goes so fast. But uh, if we've got some questions, um, we're gonna just roll a few, and um, we'll pass it over to you again. But um, just be mindful. I think we'll have to wrap it up within the next five minutes. So. Yeah, but man, I want to say thank you so much, Thanos. Like the amount of information you have like we could talk for we could yeah. talk for hours to be honest i mean there, there is just so much information out there that people need to get their hands on or we'll just start start with a little piece but you know yeah. start somewhere and i know everyone out there they're, they're so scared to talk about this stuff amongst their peers amongst their family and that's the problem that's the big problem what, well i think what's what is what is it is it just that we're so complacent that my theory you know probably stems back to when we were kids and growing up you know i guess in church and you know you can't question things you had to believe that mary was a virgin and 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 you had to believe that um jesus died and rose again you had to believe in in father christmas and that he traveled around the world and gave kids pr um, presents at midnight you had to believe in the tooth fairy and the Easter Bunny and all these fictional things, um, and and so I, I think I wonder is that why we don't question things that we're so, um, you know, we're just so um, indoctrinated. indoctrinated to in the system and just to believe things that we're told that we don't question things. What is it? <laughs> I believe it's motivated by fear. Mm. People don't want to know the truth because yeah. look, accepting something like that technology being dangerous then puts a whole bunch of question marks up like why is there a vaccine why is there social distancing why is there masks why can't you leave your house all of those things all of a sudden bear different questions because now you're like okay so that's not that's not an infectious disease so why am i getting asked to do all these things it prompts a lot of fear in people right people need to believe they can trust the government people need to believe they can trust the authorities People need to believe they can trust the medical, the medical professionals that are look, apparently looking out for their best interests. And everything's motivated by fear. That's what's making everyone yell out at people for not wearing masks. And that's what's prompting people to work so hard at maintaining the lie within themselves because they are so um, you know, concerned with the fact that this could all be one big fabrication that it just 
it's really concerning to them. Oh, we've got any waiting for these questions to pop up. Don't know what happened to them? All right, what have we got here? I'd love to. I'd love to know what's happening with your arrest. Oh, on 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 the tenth of May. Yeah, what, oh, what's happened there? Oh, so I'm inside <laughs> oh. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. So you know, I got arrested for a summary offence. They gave me a fine. I took the fine back to the officer who gave it to me in an envelope with his name on it. Um, and now the burden, the burden, and pr the burden of a burden of proof lies on the um, uh, the plaintiff. So he's the one who has to prove that I'm guilty of that offence. Um, okay. So I've given it back to him, and that was the end of it. I haven't heard back from that fine since. Yep. Oh, that's crazy. In terms of what happened to me, I got put in the I got put in the um, the divvy van along with uh, Dennis and some other another dude. I don't remember his name. Yeah. This uh, Islander guy, a really nice guy as well. Um, and we were sitting in there for about an hour and a half, I, I believe, maybe two hours. They drove us back to Spring Street. They let us out one by one. They asked us questions like, you know, what's your name? Um, can we have some identification, please? They said, you're going to be issued with a fine. I said, is there any other reason you're going to keep me here, officer? I go, um, this is a summary offence, right? He goes, yep. I go, so section 458, subsection 3, reason no longer continues, you have to let me go. And he just, they all like looked up and they go, well, this guy knows what he's talking about. And they go, yeah, you can go now. And um, I walked out and um, yeah, I walked down to Southern Cross Station, got the train home after that. And that was the end of it. Wow. It was a summary And, and that just shows you've got to know your rights. I think that's so important. Mm. A lot of us don't know our rights and it's so important mm. to know your rights. Um, but look, I guess um, before we do finish up, in solutions, like what is the solution? Mm. You know, what advice... Do you have, what, what? where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? How can we support this movement? How can we educate our family? What advice do you have for us? What, what? yeah, share, share with us. I know you've got some good advice how we can support this movement. Um, and we know we've got a lot, you've got a lot of fans behind you as well that are supporting you too. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Much love. <laughs> um, so solution focused. You have to look at this from a fact that... Um, one solution for your mental health, try and live in two worlds at the moment, right? Um, you know, there's so much going on at the moment in terms of that's completely out of your control. Don't waste your energy too much on fighting the fighting so much against, um, how can I explain it? Like a lot of people are getting hurt these days because they don't want to wear the mask, right? Um, and then when the, cop, when the cops, um, you know, go to question them, they don't want to give their name and address. You're going to get arrested and they're going to grab their name and address off you anyway. Um, because, you know, under Section 190 of the Public Health and Wellbeing Act, one of the requirements is in an emergency uh, under their public health risk powers, um, we must provide them with our name and address, right? Now, whether you want to be in your common law or not, the cops work out of statutory legislation. So, you know, we've got to learn to play out of both, both games there. Um, so one bit of advice I could give is, don't put yourself in positions where you're going to get hurt by the police because of the fact that you're challenging them on things that they don't know about and they just think they're well within their rights to do whatever they're going to do. Um, you know, so it's easy to, you know, just provide them with your name and address. You know what I mean? When they give the fine, go take it back to them. That's it, you know, because you're putting yourself in harm's way by allowing them the opportunity to use force on you because you're, in their eyes, you're committing an offence because you aren't adhering to the section under 190 of the Public Health Act, you know, under the Public Health and Wellbeing Act. So, yeah, it's all about, you know, learning how to live in two worlds, staying positive, looking after your health, try and have fun every day, right, no matter what's going on. Um, and in terms of uh, your family and friends, don't give up, man. Just keep keep plugging away and just keep hammering them with information because sooner or later the penny's going to drop. And all it takes is to go hit that point of critical mass within their thinking and they're like, the moment they start to question, well, that doesn't make sense, all of that information you've been flooding with them for all of that time is all going to come raining back in the back of their mind and they're going to say to themselves, well, you know what, you were really onto something there. I've had so many people send me messages saying, look, um, I really appreciate the fact that you don't give up on all this stuff because I was really not believing all this. And I really didn't support what you were saying. But after really looking into it, um, you know, I thank you because, you know, you made me see what was going on, you know. So 
that, that would be my advice. And in terms of solution focused, um, don't give up and, you know, maintain that, do your research, know, know your laws, know your rights, know when to use your energy and know when to conserve your energy because, you know, this is really, um, you know, whether you want to believe it or not, this is like World War Three, but this is the corporations against the people. Yeah. Mm. It's, the, yeah. it's like the, the bio war really, isn't it? Mm. Welcome to the new age, new world order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, on, on that note, it's been an absolute honour and pleasure wow. having you on. I'm going to wish you, it is your, it is your birthday tomorrow. Yes, so, don't yes. forget to wish Reynolds' <laughs> happy birthday tomorrow. So wishing you a happy birthday. And you know what, thank you. Keep on doing what you're yeah. doing. Keep on speaking your truth. Keep on sharing. Yep. Um, and, um, yeah, just thank you for, yeah, just being out there and being a voice for so many people. And also, you know, I guess, you know, your voices, people are hearing you. So, mm. yeah, just keep on doing what you're doing you know we support you and you've got yeah. a lot of people um around the world that support you too so thank you so much for coming on and being our first guest on what matters and launching the show thank with us you so tonight. much ladies thank you for having me and um it was an absolute pleasure to um you know allow you guys to set the tone with your new show great setup fantastic thank <laughs> you thank you take care and keep doing the good work yeah <laughs> All right, guys. Well, wow, what a show! Let us know what you think. I, you know, I love. I've I've been listening to Fanas speak for a long time, and mm. um, you know, I said at, at the beginning I thought he would sound a batshit crazy, but he does make a lot of sense. Yeah. And um, and I think it's important to ask questions, and yeah. you know, let us know what you think. Let, yeah, us, let know. us know what you think. Um, I mean, he had a lot of information to share with everyone, and that's not even the tip of it. I know this guy's got more to talk yeah. about, and unfortunately, we didn't have the time. Maybe we can get him back on again one other day but I'm just so pleased to have um, you know such a, a young um, vibrant man in, who's out there knows his rights yeah um, trying to educate people look at it look at alternative news yeah don't get sucked into you know what do they call it mainstream mainstream media, media fake news I mean it's up to you you, you know you, you take the information you pull it apart and you decide for yourself yeah okay? and and please share this share this um, live stream share it with your friends if you think there's people mm. out there that need to hear the message and, and need to hear um, what we've spoken about feel free to share it um, if you want to create another little watch party mm. but yeah um, we will be back again next week guys at 7 p.m. on Tuesday um, thank you for all the comments. Thank you for you know, um, yeah, reaching out to us, and and we will you know uh, follow what matters. We're gonna um, release our next guest. So let us, but also let us know what topics you want us um, to talk about. Who are the guests you want to hear from, mm. and and let us know what really matters to you. Mm. So on that note, thank you so much, guys. I'm Jess. I'm Jojo. Have a good night, everyone. See you next week. Bye. Bye.